Welcome to Slow and Steady, the podcast where you get to follow along as we build products in public. Each week, we'll give you an honest peek into our lives as we share our struggles, our wins, and everything in between. I am Benedicta, and I'm feeling hopeful. And I'm Benedict. Today is December 14th, and I'm feeling relaxed. And I'm Brian. I'm in Hot Springs, Arkansas. This is episode number 120, and I'm feeling relaxed. Ah, Benedict. great. <laughs> that we all right, right in well, line. At least two of three hosts feeling relaxed. That's that's an achievement. <laughs> relaxed, relaxed, and hopeful. I am not very relaxed, that's for sure. <laughs> but hopeful that you will be. <laughs> hopeful that soon I or or someday in the future. Or someday in the future. That is true. I am mostly hopeful that I am over my illness, which is ah. undecided mm. uh, what it is. But I've had. I guess I was out Thursday, Friday, Saturday, totally. Mm-hmm. So I didn't do, I didn't get to do any work really, which was mm. um, a little annoying because this is actually like my most pressing week of the whole fall. It feels like. <laughs> <laughs> well, just because of the the times we live in, and you have to ask it anytime somebody has a a runny nose. Did you get a rapid? Did you get a COVID test or anything? Oh, I have done so many rapid tests and they've all been negative, but now my neighbor who had all negatives now had a positive. She was negative for a week, both on the proper ones and on the rapid ones. And then yesterday, she last night, she was like, well, now I'm positive. So tomorrow I have a talk digitally, luckily, but I'm doing a talk. So after the talk tomorrow, I'm going to try to do one of those um, drop in tests yeah where yeah you'd get the proper one but yeah the neighborhood is a little bit in in a frenzy right now testing frenzy since there's uh, Mm -hmm. so many who are oslo is in a frenzy it's it's back so yep we yeah we just have to um do the best we can but there's no more rapid tests to be found so (laughs) we all have to go get that wow (laughs) Get the proper test. But if Jeez. if it was the big C, I'm over it uh, because I'm now <laughs> much, much better. So I'm on the way okay. out. So uh, that is great. So I'm feeling a lot better. And I think I wrote in my notes that I'm really happy for those margins. I don't know if you were here for that, Brian, but I was talking to Benedict about like, I want to, I'm like Very baking nice. and like doing all of yeah. that stuff because I now have like a little extra time and I don't feel so stressed. So no more margins this week, but at least it makes it so that I will be done with this talk by tomorrow at noon when I'm doing it. So. <laughs> I was That's like, just so, in time. That is just in time. I mean, I've never, ever been more ahead. But at this time, <laughs> I was like, oh, I'm going to be ahead because I was going to do it Thursday and Friday and then maybe a little bit Saturday. <laughs> but no. <laughs> Did you, have you managed to, uh, uh, and maybe maybe it was better to not, but have you managed to, to keep your yoga streak intact? Despite I have. Your- under the weather? Oh, yeah. Hey. Wow. Except for Very Sunday. Cool. Except for Sunday. Well, sure. But then I took a yeah. day, day of rest. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah, it helps. I have my new yoga buddy on Twitter. So it like yeah. gives, gives me that extra. Did, did you extra modify? Did, like, did you do your like your regular flow? Or did you find something like yoga for head colds? <laughs> <laughs> yoga for <laughs> corona <laughs> um, yeah. no um, I was very lucky because and that's why I kept it up actually because I was on this journey challenge like I, that I like to call it but and um, I think Saturday like the focus was it was like heal I think was the focus word so there were like three days where they were usually like 17 minutes or 20 minutes and like super slow before it's picking up now, because I guess I was on day 29 today. So I did the regular one today. It was like a 30 minute one. So, but anyways, I was lucky or faith or whatever. It was like, it fitted really well with my um, physical health. With your state. <laughs> with my yeah. state. So, the yeah. Universe so knew. The universe, the universe knew. The universe knew what you know. needed. 
So, no, but so that was really good. And I think that helped a lot to just like get the body moving. It just feels, you feel a lot better, even though you're, you're sick. So, so that was good. Um, yeah. And I said that about the margins. And also this talk is like a combination of talks that I have done. So I already had like most of the stuff that I needed, but of course I created a demo so I can live code now that I love to live, <laughs> live code. But the yeah. demo was done early last week, so uh, that was great. And I think it's a really good demo because it shows off encryption and decryption in a really fun way, I feel. You see the key, mm -hmm. you see the plain text, and you see the cipher text in the same view, which I at least make makes it feel more, like it visualizes it a little bit mm -hmm. so that it's not just boxes and algorithms and, you know, that kind of stuff. So I think it feels like a... Feels like another example of your your engine building, <laughs> like really, you know, starting to like well not come together. It's been coming together for a while. It feels like another example of the engine you've built is now making yep. these engagements easier to pull off. Absolutely, absolutely, and it's just really nice to see. And also, I had had I used slides dot com and. I was like, why did I pay for that back in the day? And now I was like, yes, now I, just, like, I had all the things there. I could just like copy, remix. All the images are already imported in that um, image importer. And it just like makes everything so much easier to just like pull mm -hmm. off another one. So yeah, definitely the engine. The engine is chuka, 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 chuka. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, no, so I really, because uh, so uh, even uh, even if, even as like being sick, it was just like, it felt like this is still like, it's still going to work. I still going to be able to pull it off. Um, I was a little unsure yesterday, but, um, mm -hmm. but I'm going to pull it off. And also, even though I was feeling not up to making slides yesterday, cause slides is a, that is a mental, <laughs> I don't know, for me, that's some of the most challenging stuff I do. I still managed to get like a super great start to my um, non-hourly gig that I got where I'm going to make a demo for Outsetai and React. And that's when I was like, you know, I'm senior because I was like, my head was not there, but I could still like do a lot of the stuff that I needed to do. And since I'm not building hourly, I didn't feel like, oh, since I'm sick, like, should I like build them like for 60% of this time? Or should I, <laughs> you know, because when like, you, I didn't feel like I was like my at my best, mm -hmm. but I could still do a lot of get a lot of the work done it just took me a little bit longer and i like ended up finicking with the styles even though i'm not supposed to do styles because i was unfocused <laughs> but i got like a lot of stuff done and like a really great start and so this non-hourly stuff i mean wow <laughs> i am digging it um, <laughs> and the, also the just jonathan like, stark ethos has really taken hold I mean, now now that I'm testing it, oh, this is yeah. this is this works. This works really well. It just really works for me. I think they had a really great a podcast. Him and another, it's called Business of Authority, where they talked about like why it doesn't work for a lot of people. And if you end up just spending like a lot of time before you just you just perfectionize it, like even though you've done what you're supposed to do, you just keep on going because you are unsure, like you still kind of value yourself in the time you put in, then you just keep on going and going because you want to kind of prove your your worth in that like hourly sense. And if you do that, then it's going to be hard. But I feel like now that I'm senior enough to be like, this is good enough. And this is what was the point of this demo or like, this is what I was supposed to deliver and not kind of work myself into a corner and just like keep on working just to like show off that I like I spent a lot of time on this <laughs> I mean that's exactly the problem with with hourly is that the incentives just don't don't match I mean in the end you're rewarded for spending more time on it and being less efficient and maybe doing other work that's not really required because you get paid for it versus with fixed price or at least um daily rate or whatever you're a little bit detached from the actual time you spend it and then actually can focus on the value and if you if you manage to provide the value in an hour then that's good i mean it would be 
it would be a shame if you produce something great in an hour but can only bill for one hour because you didn't take twice as long or <laughs> even more than that because 20 times as long. you know what you're doing to yeah. do yeah right yeah i feel like it is the it's a good evolution now that i feel like i have the experience and i am kind of at a at a level where i should you know that famous not that i am you know picasso or whatever but it's like this famous thing like how, why is this painting you know so expensive it only took you like half an hour or whatever and it's like well it's your accumulated experience that makes yeah. it so that you can make it that fast or um make it that good in within the time frame so uh yeah it no but it feels it feels really good and it feels good like mentally for me because i was a little scared that i would feel like i wouldn't i would end up working too much or like get into that like habit of like yeah um but it felt really good when i was working on it uh yesterday i'm not done though so i can still like work myself into <laughs> a frenzy if i well, want are, to. <laughs> are you done <laughs> i am no but Maybe. no i'm not i i am not done <laughs> but i got no. a lot of the big kind of uh things that i wasn't sure of i figured out like how they work and um mm -hmm. i know like what to do so yeah so that that feels and also just i don't know i don't know about you but i sometimes enjoy working from bed and i always feel weird billing for hours where i'm like not really even gotten out of bed mm. <laughs> but now like i don't have to think about like i could be sick i can be like in, like i can be at the coffee shop and be like halfway and spend like three times as long but like watching people mm. go by like it it's just oh my god it's so freeing that's funny i so i, I hate, need more of these i hate working from bed i i do yeah, it every too. now and then <laughs> i like slip into it and i hate it i try to never never ever do yeah. benedict you're agreeing so, yeah yeah mm. i i can't work from bed. It just, oh. just see. I I can. We're we span the we we uh we cover the spectrum here. Um, I can and don't like it. Benedicta can and loves it. And Benedict, I just can't. You just can't. Okay. I feel like it's but cheating. I... Like you get work done and you haven't like had to get out of bed, which is like <sighs> the worst thing in the world is getting out of bed. <laughs> Oh, that's amazing. That's so awesome. I feel like it's like it's like vacation or like weekend, hmm. even on a work day, because I don't get that. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Uh, I Wait, remember I when, I, when I got started consulting, um, and the thing that eventually got me to, to stop doing hourly billing and just go with a daily rate was that, especially in the early days, I would... I would still like track my time and I think I was tracking in five minute increments or something like that. And I'd literally stop, I'd stop the timer when I took a bathroom break. And that at some point I was like, I don't know, this, this seems ridiculous. This can't be right. <laughs> yeah, I think, I think you're right. It is ridiculous and, uh, it isn't right. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. It's, I mean, it's, you're like, yeah, you I'm only billing for the time I'm working. But if you're <laughs> honest with yourself, you're taking a bathroom break, but it's not like your brain stops thinking about the problem. Exactly. And at yep. night when you go home uh, eating dinner, you're probably still thinking about that problem. Mm -hmm. And the thing that that thing that put me over the edge uh, with um, um, stop hourly billing and doing an hourly rate was I was on site at a customer for a week and they took me out for dinner that night and I basically spent another four hours doing unpaid consulting work <laughs> during that dinner. <laughs> I was like, I mean, it was Wait, a nice a conversation and, <laughs> and I got a free dinner, but at the end I was in my hotel room. I was like, did you like, just looking back at what just happened was that I was, I got a free dinner, but I provided probably, I don't know, days worth of value in that just conversation telling them about project mm -hmm. management and stuff like that and that's mm -hmm. what's uh, yeah let's not let's not do the hourly thing anymore because it's it's a lie <laughs> yeah and i think it is different when you go into because i did have you know a contract for a long time now that where i went into the office 
and then it's very kind of defined even though i think it's not maybe the correct way to do it but it's very defined like when you're there you're on the clock even though you're sitting in the coffee corner and just like shooting the breeze with people you're still like you're on the clock like that's okay like everybody is okay with that because you're supposed to like build team spirit and you know all of those things um but then when i work hourly from home i do the same thing as you've been except you know the engineer mindset comes in and i'm like well you know i'm not working i am loading my dishwasher which suddenly feels so much further from work even though I'm still like crunching the things in my head and I would maybe then be in the coffee corner at the office or loading the dishwasher in the coffee. I never do that though. That's one of the things <laughs> I don't do as a, as a woman in tech. I like do nothing like that when I'm on, on a tech job, but anyway, um, but, but like you do that, you would do that in an office setting. Um, so I had a really hard time just like ethically, I guess, like figuring out like which hours should I put in and what should I not put in and, and and also those kind of halfway, as I said, like in bed or like half sick or like I yeah, I just I find it so hard. So I probably ended up like under billing a lot. So doing this where it's like, oh, you're willing to pay me X amount for this demo and it, you know, should cover these topics. It just feels so good because, yeah. Well, we covered that. It feels so good. I'm just going to repeat that. It feels so good <laughs> because also because I might overwork. Like if I want to go down some like rabbit hole and figure out something for my own benefit, I don't have to then think about like how many percentage of that rabbit hole <laughs> should I build a client kind of because I should have been senior enough not to go down that rabbit hole if I was just going to do the work that was like given to me. Yeah. So, yeah. Hallelujah, I guess. <laughs> to the non-hourly um, yep. stuff. Yeah. But you want to keep on... Who wants to jump in? Is that... It, is that oh, that concludes. Yeah, that thing? concludes me. Well, I've been sick, so, like... <laughs> <laughs> I haven't done that much. <laughs> Apparently, you've been sick and putting in work, so yeah, <laughs> yes, yeah, from bed. <laughs> um, well, I can. Yeah, I've got. I mean, I've got some updates I can go with here. Yeah. So, I mean, the the big one being, you know, follow up from last week. Like this will be my last episode for three months, and we will uh, we'll check back in. You know, then after a little hiatus to see where to see where things stand. Um, the uh, the first piece of news, you know, I talked last week about the, uh, you know, the board game contest that we had entered backpack into and we would be finding out the results the next day. Um, drum roll. Drum roll. Yeah, I was, I was just going to say, do you want to drum roll? <laughs> backpack. One. The contest. Whoa! First, <laughs> first place. I, I am fully astonished. This and is amazing. So I, it it is it it is it is it is wild. It's wild. Um, I truly can't. I, I still. I honestly. Can't, I really can't. I still can't believe it um and uh it's it's so exciting so the next i mean what so what's what does that mean what does it mean that we won um thousand dollar cash prize if we don't end up you know publishing with this company um but that's kind of like so what you know the 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 cash side of the whole thing was like never even a factor in it um if we do publish with them um, then we get, you know, a, a $1,500 advance that we would then, you know, earn back against, um, uh, from, from sales. But, um, you know, practically, you know, the next steps will be to, to meet, um, you know, formally with the company, uh, to talk through, you know, what are their, what are their plans <laughs> for, uh, finishing the design and development, do they have requests of us? What are the things that they want to change, don't want to change, you know, et cetera, et cetera. And, um, 
yeah, and, and getting a getting a sense for what all that means. Um, and then play testing, artwork, manufacturing, production. I mean, that's like a year, that'll be a year long. Like we'll, we'll be lucky if people can buy this for Christmas next year. Um, that's just kind of a standard, you know, expectation that, that it kind of takes that long, but it's, it's bonkers y'all. Um, (laughs) we will be able to, you know, from now on, you know, pitch additional pitch games to directly to publishers being able to say, you know, previous previous game won this contest and is in stores or is, you know, in the current in the process of being published. It just like the being able to have a foot in the door with a bit of legitimacy is the is the biggest upside of this whole entire thing. Um this I, is wild. <laughs> it is wild. It is. So this would be, be similar to like getting a book published, right? Like you would get all of that kind of cred that comes with having like a publisher behind a book. Yeah. As opposed and, to and, like just selling it to, online yourselves. To, exactly, totally. And to and to be clear, like an indie publisher, you know, this is <laughs> yes. this is not Milton Bradley or Parker Brothers or anything like that. Um but this is this is a legitimate publisher you know with uh i don't know a dozen 20 something or so games on on board game geek and their last three they will probably kickstart it um just looking at their recent history like previous kickstarters they're raising you know 150 grand two hundred thousand dollars from you know three thousand four thousand backers so um that's real that's that's legit uh legitimate so um so yes, that, that is that's a the perfect analogy. It's like this is the difference between us self-publishing it and you know putting it on you know some platform or somebody publishing it and doing the distribution. Yeah, this sounds like a great well, it's a great opportunity in any case. But I feel like um, if you not do this you'd also end up going to kickstarter trying to come up with all of this yourself yep. so yes figuring out production yes. all of it and it sounds like this might be a good shortcut in a way like even though it's uh, maybe not the m- most well-known he, publisher in the world but i at least have experience with all of it and huge, you don't have to figure it out by yourself huge <laughs> shortcut yeah it's <laughs> I don't know. It's just still it's very bizarre and absurd. It's absurd to me that that we that we got first place. Um You look very happy. The whole I I, I am. <laughs> For um, the people who can't see the, you. <laughs> the whole the I mean the entire like the f- whole motivation was um you know, it's just me and Graham, like two buddies. We're just doing this ourselves. So let's try and hold ourselves to some milestones without making it too big, like too, you know, stodgy whatever. And we held that momentum for forever and then we kind of slumped. And so I was like, hey, dude, there's this contest. Like, let's just go into it with an open hand. Like, we don't really care about any of it. But what it does is it gives us some deadlines to shoot for. And at the end of it, we'll have like three or four sentences of feedback from some experienced playtesters. So let's just do it. And then we got through the first round and we're like, okay, cool. We get, instead of three sentences, we get three more play tests and, you know, a paragraph. Then we got into the top 10. It's like, oh my gosh. Okay. Well now we get to, you know, have some experience pitching to a publisher. That'll be cool when we get seventh place. (laughs) And then (laughs) it's, oh gosh, I just, I can, I'm I'm all, uh, yeah, I, I, I can't, I can't believe it. I can't wait. I'm so excited. Um, I have to say, I'm also kind of, yeah, go ahead. Do you want, can you see yourself making more games? Is that like a path for you? Well, as a fun hobby, definitely. I mean, I've already got two that I have like in Ziploc bag prototypes, you know, in my cabinet over here. (laughs) Okay. Um, And, um, but, but because it is just, it's just so fun and creative um it's totally where my creative outlet is going right now 
is uh is into you know thinking through like what would make this better is this fun etc cetera, etc cetera. and um so uh as a, as a hobby definitely um but as as a like realistically as a vocation no it is so ridiculously difficult to to make a to be a full-time designer um I, it's very much i think like being a writer or an actor you know like for every you know one person who does it full time there's 500 or 1000 people who are like it's their side gig you know um so i have no uh fantasies or or expectations uh of that at all um it's just like it would be really really fun to you know design one game per year and pitch it to 10 publishers or 50 publishers, what, whatever, you know, it takes like one a year. That's awesome. That'd be fun. Nice. Um, yeah. And to be able to sit around and play it with friends. Do you feel like, um, your, because you mentioned pitching to publishers, do you feel like your, your past experience with, uh, working in startups and doing sales and stuff like that helped with that process? Big, big time. Yeah. Um, there's, I've, I've said this plenty of times here, um, that there are so many parallels between software development and, uh, board game design that I, that just came in so handy along the way. Um, you know, UX is just such a big deal, um, in, in a game and being able to you know go into it with that approach of um you know don't argue back with the user as to why it is their <laughs> fault that they did this thing wrong and don't and don't ask them for the solution ask them hey i noticed you bumped up against this thing like what yeah i mean what what happened there you know and and being um you know like not having any ego uh or like this is my baby and you're wrong and I don't have to listen. Like all those things along the way um, helped us gather very valuable play testing feedback um, and noticing along the way what made, what makes this game different than others, like uh, and being able to position it uh, and market it and describe it, you know, with those like, having that experience from consulting and uh you know software development like why should somebody adopt this thing and not the other one that they've already got well it's because you know it does that thing but it also does this in a different way and you know uh yeah all those all those things for sure came together plus our our rule book was i i i mean i i want to say like it's impossible to be objective about this, but looking at all the, at the other entries, like our rule book was really good. Um, and so, which just comes from, you know, writing good documentation and thinking, <laughs> you know, being empathetic to the person who's going to, you know, consume it. And uh, yeah, so, and we, 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 you know, we got that feedback from the, uh, from the, the from the company and, and talking to them and um yeah, I so many thoughts on that, but that that I think would be good to <laughs> to flesh out elsewhere. But yeah, right now I'm just we're 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 both just enjoying it. I uh, I got on the Graham, you know, texted me and was like, "Hey, bud, go refresh the contest page and give me a call." <laughs> like, okay, and first place. Uh, I mean. All I could say was just like, we, we, we won for five minutes. I was just like fully speechless. Um, so it was, it's very exciting. Anyway, what a great end to this year where Boy, yeah. things have been changing. Uh -huh. Yeah. Yes. Such a, <laughs> yeah, a great, a great end. Um, and and a new beginning i mean now we begin the process of okay wow what what does it mean to take a game to to shelves 
Um, so thanks for, yeah, thanks for listening and thanks for <laughs> going along on the, on the journey. Everybody stay, stay tuned. I'll, I'll let you know when, what, what actually happens and when you can add it to your shelf. Um, let's see. Other, other, other thing, you know, is, um, like what happens to, to jtbd.app for the next, uh, number of months. And I'm just trying to approach that with a very, open hand as well you know i mentioned you know kicking off some conversations in in mega maker with some folks um that's still in process um just trying to find one that's a good that's a good match that makes sense for everybody that feels like a good deal to them that they're excited about um and and i think you know also balancing trying to give myself a little bit of space um and perspective to ask you know do I still want to try to build something? Why? Why do I want that? And is this the only way I can get that? Um, so I'm, I'm still kind of, still trying to kind of answer that in my question in my head. Um, why do I want to, why have I always wanted to build a SaaS company? Uh, it scratches a creative itch. And I believe wholeheartedly that, you know, ownership is, is the best way, best path towards, um, you know, wealth management. Um, and which, which is another way of saying stability. You know, I don't think any of us want, like want to be rich for the sake of being rich. Why do you want to have wealth for stability? So, um, those are the things I want scratch a creative itch and provide some stability for my family. I'm accomplishing both of those things. I mean, yeah. with your game like, and with GitLab, tense. like that is a right. good combo because then you get, and it's not, it's not even, it's a hobby, of course, but it is a hobby with that business aspect. It's not just like doing something in your living room and like keeping it in your living room. You're actually, <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> <laughs> you're actually getting it out there and yeah. you won. So you're definitely getting it out there. So, um, you know, you could think about that more as a business, I think, because you said, oh, it's like writing or uh, an actor, and in my head, I was like, or indie hacker. I mean, mm -hmm. we are in a little bubble where, like, it seems like a lot of people are making it, but I think the odds are basically the same as for actors and writers and game makers. I don't think it's that much easier to like make it with a SAS than with like mm -hmm. a series of games. It's just a totally different business. Um, but it could to, be a yeah. business you're in. I agree. So, yeah. yeah, I think so. So I just think that's, they, I guess that's the me. upsides that's, of a SaaS is so much higher. I guess that's why some of you know. Yes. Could, <laughs> yeah, for sure. But still, sure. like, if you don't want to be, like, if you don't need to be mega rich, <laughs> there are other ways to get there. Mm hmm. Yeah. So that's okay. That's I mean that's me for me for a little while um benedict what's up in your world man yeah um we didn't win a contest um so i <laughs> unfortunately can't share any exciting news <laughs> like that um but it was an interesting week last week uh it was yeah it was interesting um so jane was out on a vacation and she posted ridiculously beautiful diving pictures um <sighs> from Egypt underwater with corals and fish. And I don't wow. know, it's just amazing. Um, but I was basically manning the, <laughs> the useless boat last week on my own. Um, so I didn't get a lot of stuff done. Um, it was mostly a mix between doing interviews for the front-end developer position and customer support. Um, and... I mean, there were some couple hours here and there where I probably could have done a little bit more work. But to be honest, after this year, I feel like uh, taking it slow, especially in December now. Um, I'm taking it a little bit slower than usual, I guess. Um, and mm -hmm. maybe slow skipping and steady. an hour here. Yeah, slow and steady. Skipping an hour here and there um, to just not overwork myself like I did in the last couple of Decembers that I can think of. Um Anyways, I did. I think I did five interviews with uh, developers last week. That's a full time and, job. And 
Yeah, I mean, it, they all take about an hour in prep and uh, uh, doing them. Uh, and I had a couple of really amazing ones and a couple of really bad ones. And I don't want to get too, too much into detail about the bad ones because I just go on a rant and uh, people might get upset. <laughs> <laughs> But um, overall, it looks like that we have, like after the calls, we had like three candidates that were really looking really strong and really good. Unfortunately, one of them withdrew the application because they got a raise. So that's uh, that's not happening anymore, but there's still two in the run um, with one looking really good by, by now, and we'll have calls with them on Friday, and uh, Jane can pitch in and, and see what she thinks. Great. So we might hire someone soon. Let's see. I mean, oh, man. Is, good luck. This is getting exciting. Um, mm -hmm. They both ace their test assignments, more or less. I mean... You, there's always I mean you, you both are working with code there's always something to critique but in the end it's just minor stuff and they 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 got the important parts right so that's that's the key um and yeah I'm I'm overall pretty excited um on the other hiring thing I mentioned a couple of weeks ago that we hired a customer success manager And I've been a little bit quiet about the details of that because <laughs> unfortunately, after we hired them or, or agreed that they'd work for us and come on uh, and, and, and start training and stuff like that, they suddenly disappeared and they didn't resurface until early this week. Um, they were just gone. Like we had no idea what was going on. Um, they briefly mentioned some personal stuff in the in the in the beginning, but then They were off the radar. We had no idea what's going on. No, no and, way to reach. And there them. were agree. There were agreed upon next steps with dates attached to them. Yeah, we already had um, done some training with them. Like they, had, they hadn't really worked on anything, but uh, Jane had some calls with them and um, prepared. Uh, yeah, to do list of things to to catch up on and and, and get familiar with, and they just disappeared. And we were quite we weren't yeah. quite sure yeah. what what was going on. And they eventually reappeared this week uh, on Monday and replied finally replied to one of our emails and messages. And they have some personal stuff going on that I don't want to get into the details. And we're not entirely sure what what to think of it. Um because it could as well be just a good story. Um I'm not saying it is, but I'm not saying it isn't. So it's From our perspective, it's very unclear. Um, so in the end, we asked them, what do you think we should do from your perspective? And they also kind of hinted at, yeah, maybe you should go with someone else. So that's that's what we're doing now, basically looking for someone else. <laughs> uh, did, did, you have like wow. a, did you have a backup candidate from the... Yeah, we had like a short list starting of, from scratch? of... There are a couple of people that were also a good fit, but this one seemed like the best. So we are now going through that list, hoping that the other candidates are still available. But who knows? I mean, we, we have to see. Maybe we have to start from, from zero. Um, but I don't know. This was an interesting experience, nonetheless. Like It uh, raised some good questions about uh, paid time off, emergency contacts, communication guidelines, Stuff like that. I mean, it's all stuff that has we haven't really considered, and suddenly there's this problem on your hand. You're not, not entirely sure how to deal with it. And it, part of me feels bad about letting them go, but the other part is also like I, I don't know. This it has to be a mutual thing that works for both of us, and mm -hmm. it, it doesn't. It didn't look like it would. Um, so maybe we dodged the bullet there. I'm not entirely sure. Um, Anyways, it's a learning experience, and hopefully, well, good luck hopefully for you. We find a, a, as well. a good candidate for that one as well. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. That gets you thinking, though, that like maybe one should have some emergency procedures in place for oneself as as well. In case, like, if uh, I get hit by a car tomorrow, I'm in, in a coma. Like, things will fall down. Like, bills will not be paid, and things will not be delivered, and there will like, yeah. 
Yeah. There. I mean, we have sort of, we sort of have that with uh, Jane and me. Um, mm -hmm. As long as we're not in the same plane, we're probably good. <laughs> um, and we have like, we have like um, phone numbers, each other's phone numbers and also phone numbers of relatives. So, if someone goes missing, we at least have a way of reaching out to someone else who might know something. Mm -hmm. um, but we don't have that for any of the contractors we're working with. And now we're starting to think about that part. Like, should we should we get stuff like this in place for when mm -hmm. they disappear? Um, not necessarily because work stops and uh, we can't move forward, but it's just we don't, just don't have another way of just reaching people. Know. Like, yeah. In, a, in an on-site setup, you can at least, mm -hmm. yeah, you get concerned. And in, a, in an on-site setup, you can at least go to that address and knock on the door or anything. <laughs> um, not that you should as an employer necessarily, but um, there's at least I mean, a way to reach I mean, sometimes you should. People. Yeah, some, maybe you should sometimes, yeah. If um, you have somebody who's single and lives alone, then like nobody else kind of checks up on them, knows yeah. and they, they haven't showed up for work for two or three days and I think the employer should definitely do something or notify someone at least. Yeah. Um, and I, overall, it's just a, a learning experience. Um, mm -hmm. So we don't have a customer success manager right now, uh, but maybe we'll find a new one soonish. Let's see. Um, just overall, like raise some interesting questions. Let's, let's say it like that. Yeah. Um, the other learning totally unrelated to hiring and stuff like that is from last week that I'm regretting one of the decisions we made um, in the early days of UserList. Um, and that's um, using Markdown as our source of truth for message content, which seemed like okay. a great idea back then because like uh, both Jane and I are huge fans of Markdown. And yep. it's a super simple format and does the job well for... Yeah, for most of our things. And even f personally, we probably not need a what you see is what you get editor. We just write the markdown and be good. But unfortunately, we're pretty alone with that stance. <laughs> so um, <laughs> from your very different from your user base. Yeah, very basically. different from our user yeah. base. Um, <laughs> yeah. And I mean, who most are these of our... people who don't write markdown? I mean, do, I do they know. exist? Yeah. I mean, markdown is just do perfect. They... <laughs> Yeah, I, I totally. Um, and honestly, I still think it's, I still like it. The problem that we ran into it just uh, is that because we build a WYSIWYG editor on top of it and using Markdown as the source of true storage format, all the little kinks and weirdnesses in the Markdown spec sneak up on you without you realizing. And suddenly you can't, like, for one, suddenly stuff that's expected from a WYSIWYG editor just doesn't really work anymore. For example, like resizing images and stuff like that. Mm -hmm. Just not There's just nothing in the standard common mark spec for that. So that was one thing we had to hack in in the past. I mean, there are some extensions, so we, we kind of made it work. But last, last week we had a customer struggling with a simple thing such as new lines. <laughs> and they were just not able to format their email in a way the way they wanted it because markdown would just collapse paragraphs and remove stuff here and there because usually you're not i mean the beauty of markdown is that you you're not caring about any of that aspects like this is a paragraph like style it as a paragraph and we don't care about new lines but this particular customer totally cared about the new lines <laughs> and the spacing between the things and it's just a nightmare. It like mm. the WYSIWYG editor in theory would support all of what they wanted to do, but because we serialized into Markdown and Markdown does just strips a bunch of stuff and doesn't care about it, it's causing a lot of problems. And I'm regretting our decision to <laughs> to have Markdown as the the thing that gets stored to the database. Um, so we're looking at uh, at least thinking uh, about removing it and getting rid of it entirely because while we thought it was a great idea, it obviously has problems and no one else cares. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, we probably should do a survey before we remove it entirely, but I have a suspicion that 99% of our customers 
don't care about it at all. <laughs> I want to write Mark down. <laughs> okay, so it's maybe uh, <laughs> maybe you're the one person who cares about it. Um, but have you looked into other yeah. formats? What formats are you looking at? Um, right now, I think the most likely thing we're going to do is um, Prose Mirror, the WYSIWYG editor we're using as a base for our implementation, has its internal tree structure based format that is basically an AST of like, this is a paragraph, this is a headline, this is an image. But it's a little bit more, more verbose and allows more flexibility than just Markdown. And we're just thinking about storing that JSON data structure in the database and then writing a renderer that just looks at that and it's like, oh, this is a paragraph. Let's add P tags around it. This is a link. So let's do a link there and, and all of that mm-hmm. stuff. And I was able to bang out a prototype implementation of that part in two or three hours. So it's it's super simple, uh, but uh, migrating everything and redesigning the, the editor and all of that, that will still take a lot of time. But um, yeah, I think it's the way to go. Why why not just use tricks that plays really well with Rails? Um, because we're not like, while we are a Rails application, we are not using any of the like user list is an API only application, so mm-hmm. the default tricks action text stuff just doesn't work out of okay. the box. Like it's just not not an option. And I also tricks serializes stuff to HTML, I believe. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And honestly, I think that's also not the right way to go. I mean, it's definitely the most flexible one, but it's also I think in my taste a little bit too flexible for stuff like this. Mm-hmm. Um, and I feel like that that data structure format is a good in between, which allows more flexibility and also allows us to create like our own components of like I don't know. This is a link. This is a button. This is a survey widget, whatever. Um, and we can can render more stuff. And w- with HTML, it would be. I mean, maybe we'll end up using HTML because everyone wants it, but. That's a little bit too too much weirdness and too much mm. unpredictability mm. in that, I think. But who knows? We'll see. I don't think any of them, yeah. any of the email yeah. providers I've tried, gets it right. Like ConvertKit <laughs> is, you do a new line and it's a new paragraph, even though you just want a line. <laughs> so you get all that space. <laughs> and then there is. And the same thing with, or was that MailChimp? I don't know. Like it. Uh, in any, I mean, I any of them that I use, they just don't, wor- they don't work as expected. Yeah, or as I expect yeah. them <laughs> to work. Active campaign Sorry. convert kit for sure. I mean, that's I guess that's the that's kind of the validation here is, like, I think everybody agrees that the editor in whatever email platform you're currently using is finicky. Mm-hmm. <laughs> like, um, so you're you're facing you're bumping up against a problem that. Yeah, you know. and I think we're making it especially hard for us by by using Markdown as a storage format mm. because, as I said, like, it just adds a lot more finickiness on top mm. of the already finicky editing experience. So yeah, yeah, when you're not yeah, sticking to straight Markdown, because I think that is the thing. If you get if you only had kind of like dev users, it's that I at least I've realized how hard this stuff is. So I'm just gonna. I'm just not going to get that extra space. I'm just going to use Markdown. Well, I managed to actually get that extra space with a little bit of a non-breaking <laughs> space in a line, you know, when I want to. But um, so I think that we, I don't know, like I, I expect less of my emails because I just don't want to spend so much time on it. While if you come from like a non-dev background, they're like, well, this should just work, you know, like they, they're used to with, you know, creating if you create a Squarespace site or whatever, like you use these, like what you see is what you get uh, type of interfaces. Um, but by, my only idea was that Sanity, the CMS that um, is from Oslo, actually, they have created their own and I think they've open sourced it. It's called Portable Text, which is sounds like what you are talking about with that other one where they've created their own kind of tree structure. 
but then they mm-hmm. have created components around that. But probably I think all of their like ecosystem that's open source is probably JavaScript and, and React type stuff. But they have had all of these issues. Like that's been their kind of main focus since day one is like making like a great CMS experience. And I guess they are bumping up mm-hmm. against these issues. And now I know that their CMS works kind of like it has that really nice portable JSON, I think you get out of it, but they and they've managed to create kind of like a Google Doc experience where like several people can edit at the same time and stuff inside of the what you see is what you get kind of thing. So, yeah, that might be, but I think it's block based. I don't know, but that could be another one to look at. Um, yeah, I'm just looking at it right now, and it, it honestly looks ex- like the data structure. I mean, except for some minor details, is exactly the same. Yeah, like they have to, they're using the same concepts, yeah. and I'm. I wish there was like, and now now we can argue for for HTML again. But I wish there was a <laughs> <laughs> a standard, and I sort of is with HTML. Um, yeah. But again, I I want something in between. Mm. I guess like something mm-hmm. that's not quite HTML, but also not quite Markdown. So, and honestly, I I feel like we should just do something. We can always. We can still change it down the road. If it's one data structure, we can we can mesh it into something else. <laughs> <laughs> and what will so, you be doing yeah. Thursday night, Benedict? Yeah, Thursday night. Uh, this Thursday night, I will be joining you and Miriam on on a live stream All to talk right. about uh, data data, data structures. design and data structures. <laughs> Data oh, models. We ho- hopefully, we hopefully don't need trees in this one. Um, but still, yeah, looking forward to to, to jumping on a, on a live stream for a change again. Um, and I'm a little bit worried that I'm not fully prepared just yet, but uh, there's still another day tomorrow, so I can research and stuff. <laughs> ours, our streams are all about being live, figuring it out as we go, and YOLO code, which is, I guess, my <laughs> new my new thing. YOLO code. Okay, so Yolo you're saying, saying I'm I'm not allowed to prepare at all. You're not allowed to prepare I mean, at all. <laughs> it's kind of been Benedicta's mantra for <laughs> as long as I've known her. <laughs> so. No, but I think that you're. I mean, you already know the things that we need to talk about. Um, I think last week, like what Miriam is looking for, she needs some tags, and they need to be co- connected to conferences. And people need to be able to say I'm interested in the conference or I want to be a conference buddy for a conference. So this will not like your experience making user lists and like your <laughs> your other experience. Probably not going to need most of that. <laughs> I think you are overqualified. So I think you'll be totally fine to and you can prepare that, like draw up those data structure uh, ahead of time if you feel like. But I think the more interesting discussion is like this is how i would do it for your case miriam but then also you talking about like scaling issues and like come up with some like anecdotes so maybe those you could prepare like some fun scaling anecdotes from user lists and then so that we can address those issues because i think a lot of people like think that they'll have those issues so i want to like address somebody who's actually had or like have somebody who's actually had those issues tell us at what scale that is so that we will be comforted knowing that we do not need to think about that yet Fair or maybe yet. at <laughs> all because we are not sending like a million we'll never like Mira will never have like millions of emails being sent right or like a hundred thousand I don't know how many emails you've sent by now but um yeah so I think you will you'll 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 be you have the knowledge okay cool Yes. Side note, last last month we had our biggest month in terms of email sending with over 600,000 emails per month, which is not a lot for any email service provider, but it is a new record for, for us for one month. <laughs> That's awesome. That is awesome. So maybe if we implement real-time chat, Miriam will get into some of these mm. issues, but that is not on the agenda yet. That will be after Christmas. <laughs> <laughs> I, I I can tell you I once brought down a production system with real time chat. Um, yeah. Because as a consulting, I had one customer who was basically a real time chat platform, 
And at some point we decided that we had to archive all the messages sent through the real time stuff. So every um, every message that was sent would basically get, give us a callback and we'd process that. And at some point we decided, okay, let's do a broadcast to all of our users. So we sent like, I don't know, several oh thousands of messages at the same time and the real time messaging provider was sending them all back at the same time. <laughs> <laughs> So we brought those are the kind of stories server. I want on Thursday. <laughs> those are the, the kinds of stuff. stories. That's the good stuff. Yeah. yeah. And you're I, allowed I to drink stuff. if you are, a, if you like beverages with alcohol them in them. This is nighttime television. So um, okay. it's allowed. It's allowed. You should figure out what to drink then. Okay. Yeah. Easy. Yeah. <laughs> cool. Anyways, yeah. looking forward to that. Mm. Um, and. That's about it. I mean, nothing else happened on my side. Okie doke. So well, else you just had, you have to give yourself, sorry, we just have to, you have to give yourself more cred, Benedict. It's like you had five interviews and you're like, well, it's just an hour there. And I mean, it's such an energy it, that you have done anything else than doing that drain. is amazing. Yeah. So, oh, yeah. yeah. Okay. You're allowed to like not have done anything more than that. Okay, fair enough. I'm going to start enough. giving you gold stars as well. I give Miriam gold stars when she's done her homework. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, nice. So I guess the time has come for, for us to say goodbye to Brian. For now. For now. Yes. Not forever, hopefully. <laughs> no. no. <laughs> yeah. So long for now. Um, yeah. Thanks for Thanks for listening and going along on the journey we'll see where it goes from here yeah thanks for 120 episodes of doing this with me and yeah. with benedicta and um yes likewise we'll we we'll miss your ability to ask the good questions i guess we will it's <laughs> yeah. a little too much credit <laughs> i gotta pick no. up that pick y'all, up some books on listening and question no. questions y'all are y'all are awesome i'll look forward to being a listener for a little while and we'll catch up down the road Absolutely. Yeah, sounds cool. Uh, right. Benedicto, uh, this will be the last one for this year for us as well, won't it? Will I think we do so. one next week? You're, you're on vacation next week, right? I am not on vacation <laughs> at all. <laughs> this, this you're song. not? No, I, might, okay. I might be on vacation. I'm going to be in the mountains the Tuesday after Christmas Eve if, you know, the country is still allowing still cabin existing. trips <laughs> <laughs> but other than that we'll talk about we'll talk about that uh after maybe we'll see you in two or three weeks or maybe we'll see you next week <laughs> or hear you i guess okay we'll yeah 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 that we'll, was very we'll, much. then we'll probably probably do a two-week break then at the top again in the new year yeah we'll cool then everyone have a nice have nice holidays if you're celebrating yep. and a good start into 2022 don't be Benedicta, take a holiday. (laughs) Take a holiday. For sure. For sure. (laughs)